Leah here from LeahForSci.com and in this video we're going to look at some practice problems for organic chemistry functional groups. If you haven't mastered the functional groups yet, pause this video and go back to my website for the complete functional group tutorial along with the practice quiz and cheat sheet which you can find on my website linked below or by going to LeahForSci.com slash functional. Let's start with a simple problem where we have an iodine attached to a carbon and three carbon groups around it. Now technically we don't have a functional group here but we do have a group that your professor is going to want you to identify and that is iodine. Iodine is a halogen or a halide and when attached to a carbon chain this molecule is called an alkyl halide. But it's not enough to identify the molecule as an alkyl halide you want to specify the degree of substitution, specifically for the carbon that's holding the iodine. If iodine sits on this carbon here, and the central carbon is attached to one, two, three other carbons, this is considered a tertiary alkyl halide, because iodine sits on a tertiary carbon, which is attached to three other carbons. Most professors will start out showing all of the atoms but as the semester progresses, switch over to more and more line structure. If you're not comfortable drawing in line or skeletal structure, make sure you watch the tutorial video link below, and then come back and identify what we have here. What do you see? I see a carbon chain with an NH2 group on it. When you have just a nitrogen without other crazy groups attached, you should recognize the amine, but like the alkyl halide, we want to specify what type it is. But unlike the alkyl halide, with an amine we look at the nitrogen and see how many carbons are attached to the nitrogen itself. Even though nitrogen is attached to a secondary carbon, the fact that it's only attached to one carbon group, meaning we don't have another carbon or another carbon, this is considered a primary amine. And the easiest way to find this is with a pencil trick, which I teach in the video link below. Now that we're warmed up, Let's take a look at this. We have a carbon chain. It's got a nitrogen. It's also got an oxygen. So what do we have here? The nitrogen should make you think of amine, but that only applies if we don't have something like an oxygen nearby. The oxygen, which is double bound to carbon, is called a carbonyl group, but the carbonyl is not a functional group. It's a group that comes up in many functional groups like ketone, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, and more. So we have to look around the carbonyl to see what else we have. On the right side, we have just a carbon. On the left side, we have a nitrogen. And this is our key. If you have a carbonyl directly attached to a nitrogen atom, you should recognize not an amine, but rather the amide, also pronounced amide, functional group. Speaking of carbonyls, what do you see on this molecule? The first thing to recognize is that we have a benzene ring, but a benzene ring is a group rather than a functional group. Some professors will test for it, so make sure you identify benzene, but that's not the biggest thing we have here. If you recognize OH at the end of the molecule and think alcohol, you're very close, and this is a very common mistake. An OH by itself would be an alcohol, but if the O is directly attached to the carbonyl carbon, you have to look at the entire functional group as one unit, that's a carbonyl with an OH attached for a carboxylic acid. And when you have a carboxylic acid sitting on a benzene ring, that gives us a special type of molecule called a benzoic acid. Many professors won't test you on this, so make sure you at least recognize carboxylic acid sitting on benzene. Let's crank it up a bit and look at this molecule of vanillin, which is responsible for vanilla flavor. Now it doesn't come anywhere close to chocolate, but it works for this problem. We seem to have a lot of oxygens coming out of this monstrosity in the middle, which you should recognize as a benzene ring. Let's take each oxygen one at a time and see what it tells us. This oxygen is bound to just a hydrogen. It's not bound to another carbonyl, so we recognize that finally we have an alcohol. The next oxygen is not bound to a hydrogen or a carbonyl. It's bound to a CH3, 
which is just any alkyl group. Anytime you have an oxygen bound to a carbon, any type of chain, bound to another carbon, don't forget that's a carbon with any type of chain, that right there is an ether. And finally at the top, we don't have an oxygen directly attached to the ring. Instead, the oxygen is double bound to a carbon atom, which you should recognize as a carbonyl group, not the functional group, but the carbonyl is part of the functional group. And since it has a hydrogen attached to the carbonyl, this specific type of carbonyl is called an aldehyde, which means vanillin has a benzene ring, an alcohol, an ether, and an aldehyde. For even more on functional groups, from an in-depth review on naming and structure to my advanced practice quiz, first, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, click subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos, then visit my website linked below or go to layerforsci.com functional. Again, that's layerforsci.com functional.